a more Penrose pseudo-inverse solution of a system of linear equations. Suppose you have a system of linear equations to solve, but you have more equations than unknowns. The system is described as y equals ax. Suppose also that we're given the a matrix and the y vector and we want to know the x vector. For this work it'll be assumed that redundancies are removed from the a matrix. That means columns that are multiples or linear combinations of other columns are removed. Try looking at the MATLAB command subspace. Sometimes people write this as AX equals B. If the A matrix were a square matrix and had an inverse, we could proceed as follows. Y equals AX. Pre-multiply both sides by A inverse. A inverse A is just the identity matrix. So A inverse times Y would give the desired X vector. We wish to look at the case where A is not square. Then the usual A inverse cannot be formed. However, pseudo inverses can be used. There are multiple kinds. Let's take a more detailed look at the system. Here the coefficients for the A matrix, the X vector, and the Y vector are written out explicitly. And now things are grouped in their typical bracket presentation. Here I've written the A matrix to emphasize the fact that there are more rows than columns in the problems we're talking about. So there are more equations than there are unknowns. There are multiple ways of saying this. The matrix index M is greater than N. The number of rows is greater than the number of columns. The number of rows is greater than the number of variables. Or you can simply say the system is overdetermined. There are multiple ways to solve a problem like this. One solution involves the Moore Penrose pseudo inverse. I'll write the Moore Penrose pseudo inverse as A dagger, and like the more usual matrix inverse, A dagger A is equal to the identity matrix. But commutivity is not guaranteed for the Moore Penrose pseudo inverse. So to solve the linear system, we proceed as follows. We pre multiply both sides of the equation by the Moore Penrose pseudo inverse. However, here, Exact equality is not guaranteed. Rather, the more Penrose pseudo inverse does a least squares fit of the data. As with the usual matrix inverse, A dagger A just equals the identity matrix, yielding at last an approximate value for the unknown x vector. And that's how simple it is to use a more Penrose pseudo inverse to solve a linear equation. The derivation of the more Penrose pseudo inverse is beyond the scope of this video. I'll simply present the method for computing it, and you'll look elsewhere to see how it's derived if you're interested. The more Penrose pseudo inverse is computed very simply as A transpose times A inverse times A transpose, and it's used to solve the linear equation directly. Note that the MATLAB command to compute the pseudo inverse, PINV, uses the singular value decomposition, which may give more accurate numerical results. Here's an example with three simultaneous equations and two unknowns. We rewrite the equations in the matrix format, and then compute the more penrose pseudo-inverse. Next, we check that the product A dagger A is indeed the identity matrix. Now, on to solving the actual linear system that we're interested in. We multiply both sides of the equation from the left by A dagger, but notice that we use the approximately equals sign because the more Penrose pseudo inverse will produce a least squared error approximation to the x vector that we're interested in. On the left hand side, A dagger A is equal to the identity, so we're left with x equals A dagger y. Now we plug in the specific numbers for the more Penrose pseudo inverse we already computed. And the final answer is x1 equals minus 7.51, and x2 equals 8.12. It's always a good idea to check the answers, so we take the original set of equations and plug in the values for x1 and x2. Just plug the numbers in explicitly and add things up. But when we add things up, we don't get exactly the answers we're looking for. Well, what's going on? Remember, the more Penrose pseudo inverse solves the linear problem in the least squared error sense. In general, there's no exact solution to overdetermined problems. 
To explore this a bit further, take a look at the graph of the three functions we started with in this example. Here are the three equations listed with the colors. To solve the three equations simultaneously, we have to look for the place where all three lines cross at once. But there is no such point. There are multiple places where two of the three lines intersect, but no point where all three intersect simultaneously. This is typical of overdetermined systems. With the more penrose pseudo-inverse, what we're trying to do is find the location of an approximate solution where the equations approximately intersect. For this particular example, the more penrose pseudo-inverse approximates the intersection right here. Here is a more penrose pseudo-inverse solution graphed with the equations. For this particular example, the more penrose pseudo-inverse has generated a good useful solution, but often that's not the case. So it's worth the analysis effort to try to understand whether the more penrose pseudo-inverses are generating valuable, usable results for your problem space. If not, you may have to go to Kalman filtering or another advanced technique. So to recap, we're trying to solve a linear system in which we have more equations than unknowns. So instead of the usual matrix inverse, we'll use the more penrose pseudo-inverse. This pseudo-inverse will give us a least squared errors approximation to the desired solution. Thus we find ourselves in the happy circumstance of being able to approximate the solution to an overdetermined linear system.